Earth, a planet full of life, storms, seasons, and endless wonders. But now something feels off. Ice is vanishing, heat is rising, and nature itself seems out of balance. What's really going on? And why does it matter more than ever? Let's find out. Our planet is changing, not in the slow way nature usually works. Shaping mountains, carving rivers, or growing forests over thousands of years. This time, it's happening fast, too fast. And this time, it's because of us. For billions of years, Earth's climate has changed many times. There were ice ages, hot tropical periods, mass extinctions, and recoveries. But today, the changes are happening faster than ever before. The air is getting hotter, storms are getting stronger, and ice is melting quickly. This is not just another natural cycle. This is something big, and the world we know is already changing before our eyes. Long ago, Earth was covered in ice. Before that, it was a tropical world, even in Antarctica. Climate has never stayed the same. But what is happening now is different. In just 200 years, humans have made the Earth hotter than any time in the last 125,000 years. That is a very short time in Earth's history. This change is fast, widespread and dangerous. The main cause, carbon. For centuries, we have burned coal, oil, and gas for energy. This releases greenhouse gases that trap heat forming a thick blanket around the planet. But this problem is not just from power plants and cars. Forests, which absorb carbon dioxide, are being cut down at alarming rates. The Arctic permafrost, frozen ground that has locked away carbon for thousands of years, is now melting, releasing methane, a gas even stronger than carbon dioxide. Even cows, through digestion, release methane into the air. Right now, the Earth is trapping extra heat equal to 400,000 atomic bombs per day. This is making hurricanes stronger, wildfires bigger, and ice melt faster. The Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of the world. Greenland's ice sheet is shrinking, and glaciers are disappearing from the Himalayas to the Andes. These ice sheets hold enough water to raise sea levels by tens of meters. If they collapse, Entire cities, New York, London, Shanghai, it could be flooded. But melting ice is not the only problem. As oceans warm, they expand, making sea levels rise. Some coastal cities like Jakarta are already sinking. Miami is flooding even on sunny days. Whole island nations could disappear under the sea. And then there is the Amazon rainforest one of Earth's biggest carbon absorbers. But instead of storing carbon, the Amazon is now releasing it. Deforestation, wildfires, and rising temperatures are pushing the rainforest toward a tipping point, where it could turn into dry grassland. If that happens, it will not just be a local problem. It will affect weather all over the world and speed up climate change even more. Nature is already reacting. Animals are changing their behavior. Birds are migrating earlier. Insects are moving to new places. And some species are being forced to adapt or die. Some animals are even evolving because of the heat, growing bigger ears or longer limbs to release more body heat. But not all species can adapt fast enough. Coral reefs, the rainforests of the ocean, are turning white and dying as seawater warms. Forests near coastlines are dying because of rising salt water, turning into eerie ghost forests. But it's not just nature that is suffering. People are too. Droughts, floods, and extreme heat are making some places almost impossible to live in. Crops are struggling. Rice fields are flooding. Wheat fields are drying up and even coffee and chocolate crops are failing. By 2070, over 3 billion people could be living in areas where it is too hot to survive. This is already creating a new crisis. Climate refugees, 
Families are leaving their homes, not because of war, but because their land is too dry, too flooded, or too unstable to live on. As sea levels rise, whole communities will be forced to move. And then, there is the ocean, our planet's silent protector. It has absorbed 90% of the extra heat we have produced, stopping the planet from overheating. But it is reaching its limit. As CO2 dissolves in seawater, the ocean becomes more acidic. This is dissolving coral reefs and harming marine life. Tiny creatures like plankton and krill, which are the base of the ocean food chain, are disappearing. Without them, the entire ecosystem is in danger, from small fish to giant whales. So, is it too late? Not yet. But time is running out. The solutions exist. Renewable energy, replanting forests, and protecting the oceans can help slow down and even undo some of the damage. Scientists are working on new technology to remove CO2 from the air. Some are even studying ways to reflect sunlight back into space to cool the planet. But nature itself has solutions. Mangrove forests can absorb four times more carbon than regular forests. Kelp forests grow incredibly fast and pull CO2 from the water. And healthy soil can store huge amounts of carbon underground. The question is, will we act in time? In one future we change. We switch to cleaner energy. Restore nature and give the planet a chance to heal. In the other, we wait too long. And the damage continues. Rising seas, extreme heat in a world where life becomes harder for everyone, including us. Which future will we choose? Our planet is always changing, but today it is changing in a way that puts everything we know at risk. The future is not written yet. What happens next depends on us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to The Nature's Diary for more documentaries on our planet. See you next time.